chapter 9, if you have Bibles underneath our chairs, just in case you don't have one, there's one there beneath your chair, or within a chair or two from you, Mark <coughs> chapter number 9, amen. Oh, they did make it, I was just praying for you all, amen, that's a blessing. You guys came in a, a, a rough time too, you got down for it on the way in, amen, that was rough. Lots of water, Mark chapter number 9, starting in verse number 1 is what we'll be at for this Study Mark in chapter number 9. The Bible says there in verse number 1, And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow. So as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared uh, unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make the tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were so afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. Suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. Amen? Wonderful passage of Scripture. Been enjoying uh, the book of Mark. Fast-paced study, amen? Fast-paced study, but even as fast-paced as Mark is, really chapter 8, the end of chapter 8, is continued into chapter 9. These are the very first verse uh, of chapter 9. Really is a continuation of uh, chapter 8. Uh, think about what Jesus had just shared with the disciples over the last few weeks of studies that we've looked at. Uh, going back there briefly, we, we, you know, going from chapter 8 coming into chapter 9, we have to keep in mind what he was just saying to his disciples in 8 as we transition into uh, chapter 9. He revealed to them that, that he was going to be betrayed. He was going to die in the hands of, uh, of sinful men. Uh, he had offered, of course, hope and assurance as he, as he talked about the resurrection. Uh, they didn't understand that saying exactly. They didn't fit necessarily with their future program. Um, and so they were, uh, I, I don't want to use the word confused, but I guess that might be a way of, of, des of describing uh, what was going on in their lives. They really didn't understand what he was saying. And so uh, he followed the revelation of his, uh, of his death that was, that was approaching and that resurrection. He followed that with a challenge for the disciples to then take up their cross and follow him. And we talked about dying to self. We talked about, we talked about uh, uh, that sacrifice and talked about service. And, and of course, these were, you think about all of these different uh, uh, the, the, this communication, these, these conversations that Jesus was having with his disciples, and extremely sobering. And then we could even use the word shocking, right? I mean, really got their attention, uh, got their attention. And so uh, this was a sobering time for them as they were listening what the Savior was talking about with the future program and his plans to come. And, and so knowing that they needed some clarification, knowing Jesus, knowing that they needed some encouragement through all of this that he'd already given them, he offers a word of hope. But listen, we all we are all going to face difficult seasons in life. Amen. Uh, it is it is not a, it is not foreign. It is not strange for the Christian to have to deal with difficulties. Amen. In fact, sometimes as a Christian, we deal with more. Um, and uh, I'm thankful for His grace. Amen. I'm thankful that He gets us through that. Um, and and so we're going to face difficulties. There's going to be times where we just don't understand. Amen. Times where we're at a loss. We're just not sure exactly what we're supposed to do next. How, what, how, what does it look like to put one foot in front of the other? And there's, there's going to be even times in our life where struggles are, and difficulties are so intense that the that, that very foundations of our faith can be challenged. But it's in those uh, times of uncertainty, it's in those times of despair that our Savior always provides that word of assurance that word of help or hope to get us through. Amen. It's those times of uncertainty that he, that he comes in and he encourages us uh, through that difficult time. I really hope that we be encouraged by the assurance that's revealed to us in this passage of Scripture here. And I hope that we'll hold on to the truths. I hope that we'll hold on to the encouraging words that, that um, for those times where we face struggles in this life. And so by the grace of God, I examine just the details of this 
uh, encounter this passage of scriptures, I preach on this thought for just a little while. The glory of Jesus revealed. The glory of Jesus revealed. So looking at that verse number one, if you're taking notes, you want an outline uh, to follow along. Looking at verse number one, the first thing we see is the proclamation of Jesus. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. So we got to keep in mind, Jesus had just spoken uh, to them about, about, his, about his coming death, about the death that's, that's he's just about ready to die on the cross, right? He's talking to them about that, uh, and, and, uh, and, and he's talking about their, the need for them to bear the cross, amen, to be sacrificial in their service, to follow him. And so then he follows these sobering words with this promise that some of those there that day, some of those there that day would see the kingdom of God become the kingdom of God come in power before they died. And no doubt this had to have brought some sort of some comfort, some encouragement, some assurance to those disciples in, in their confusion and in the difficulty of some of the things that they had heard Jesus talk about. Now the, 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 this portion of God's word is a great example why it is so important that we study the Word of God in context. Amen? And that we, we consider it, as we're studying it in context, we're also considering it as a whole counsel. Amen? There have been many over the years that take this verse out of context and they preach various heresies uh, as a result of just, just removing one in place. So there's some that say that as a result of this verse, springboarding off of this verse, Jesus has already come, and we are somewhere in the future program uh, that is revealed in the book of Revelations. Others, even more wicked, contend uh, and say that Jesus was confused and unsure about the events surrounding the following of his death. Of course, that, 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 that's, that's an attitude that attacks the deity of Christ. Uh, cannot have any, there's, there's absolutely no defense for that sort of stand, just wicked heresy there. Uh, Jesus has not returned. Amen. He has not come back yet. We're still waiting on that trumpet to sound. The disciples have all died, though, before his second coming. And so we need to understand what was Jesus talking about? What event was he talking about? Well, he was not referring to his second coming. Of course, to establish the millennial kingdom, he was talking about the glorious transfiguration that was just about to take place, uh, which, which, of course, in just a few days, six days, they, these words would, would come to light, okay? And so those disciples were going to see the kingdom of, the kingdom of God, Christ himself, amen, standing there uh, in that radiant, unhindered glory, uh, as, uh, as he said. So we see the proclamation of Jesus. We move on to verses 2 and four, two through 4, and we see then the transfiguration of Jesus. So uh, along with, with uh, Matthew and Luke, uh, the Gospel of Mark also records this glorious transfer to transfiguration. I can't get that word. I'm trying to go too fast or something. Amen. Transfiguration of Jesus before the disciples there. So think about the, the people. That first part of verse 2, we see the people here. It says, and after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John. He said some, right? And leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. So six days... After that intense conversation, so some time, that we're, we're reading it in real time, we're reading it real quick, right? Six days later, though, there's several times, going to sleep, eating lunch, eating breakfast, whatever, however their schedule was, and going to sleep. Six days later, six days later, uh, after that conversation, the Savior, he takes Peter, James, and John up there to this high mountain. There are 12, 12 disciples that are following Jesus, 12 that they call 12 disciples there. But only these three were chosen, right? These were men, some, some folks call this his, his inner circle, right? These were men that have been described as the inner circle on different occasions. Uh, Jesus allowed only these three disciples to be a part of different activities, particular activities there. They were, they were, uh, they, it was only them that was allowed when Jesus raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead. Uh, it was these three that would be uh, that would be called to go a little further, a little later on in the story of Jesus uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And so, I, but, I, but I don't believe that this is implying that Jesus loved these more in the sense of respected these more. He's not a respecter of persons. I don't believe he loved them more than he loved his, his disciples. I do just believe that it was evident that they got to enjoy a little closer relationship with the Savior than, than the disciples did. Listen, our Lord's not a respecter of persons. You know, this tells me, this doesn't tell me that he loved them more. It tells me that, that having a closer relationship with him is attainable. Amen. That's what's exciting about it. Amen. We can get closer to the Lord. Listen, I, I believe if you look at the actions uh, of these three, you do find that these are some of the ones that were 
the most faithful in following him. And, uh, and so I, I don't know if this was as much of uh, his choice as much as it was them desiring to be closer to him. And so they had this opportunity to be a part of this, uh, of this wonderful day. Listen, I'm glad that my relationship with the Lord is not dependent on the desire or the dedication of others. Amen. Aren't you glad for that today? I'm glad that I'm, my relationship with God is, is between me and him. It doesn't depend uh, it doesn't depend on your okay uh, or your, it, it's, it's, it's all about my walk with him. I'm thankful for that, amen. It's a, it's a blessing that it's a, it's not dependent upon the desire and dedication of others, amen. I'm, I'm glad that you don't have to work for my relationship with him, amen. That would be, that would be, I mean, some of you guys, might, it might do me all right, amen. <laughs> some of you, I'm not, listen, I'm not pointing fingers or saying names, amen. Some of you, I'm, I might not want to trust my relationship in your hands, amen. Uh, we see not only the people, we also see the place. Going on in the first, uh, first part of verse 2, after six days, Jesus taketh with him uh, Peter, James, and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. So Jesus had selected this, this uh, specific place for, for his transfiguration. The disciples were led there to this high mountain uh, with him. Now, the text does not tell us uh, where exactly or what exactly this mountain is, but most agree, most theologians would say that it was Mount, Mount, uh, Mount Her Herman, uh, Herman uh, and that's located about 12 miles north of Caesarea Philippi, um, and Mount uh, Herman was, was about an elevation of, of uh, over 9,000 feet. That's pretty tall, I mean, for us Michiganders. Uh, you know, our tallest, our tallest point here in Michigan, somewhere was just a just a hair over two thousand feet. Amen. So uh, we're not uh, we're not very we're not very high up there uh, in elevation here. So that's a little high for us. But uh, 9,000 9, feet over there. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the glory of God being revealed on uh, on that on that uh, on that uh, prominent peak there in Israel? Amen. Could you just imagine? Try to imagine that. Kind of picture that. We might not know. The theologians might be wrong. I don't know. Uh, this uh, most folks agree, and so I, listen. If it, it's not there, I, I, just, I don't think it's doing scripture injustice to uh, to assume or to say possibly this is a mountain that was happening. Wherever it was, it was on a mountain. Amen. Uh, could you imagine though uh, the glory, His glory, shining brighter than the sun? Amen. This is certainly something that would have to have been seen, had to have been noticed by those with any sort of vantage point of whatever mountain that He was on. Amen. Listen, while I was thinking about this and studying this passage of Scripture and uh, considering some of the commentaries and different things like that, I was reminded, uh, you know, if you think about this, there's, there is a, a significance in Scripture with mountains. Amen? Uh, Abraham prepared to sacrifice Isaac on Mount Moriah. Amen? So, uh, Moses re re uh, received the, the law there on, on Mount Sinai. Elijah enjoyed uh, victory there on Mount Carmel. Amen? We love that story. Uh, Jesus was transfigured here on Mount, possibly, potentially, Mount Hermon. Crucified on Mount Calvary, Amen. Uh, he ascended from the Mount of Olives. I believe. I, I believe with all my heart that's exactly where he will return, Amen. I, very, very footprints that he left, uh, the very place where his foot stand, just as the angel said in that like manner. I believe he'll land, or he'll 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 rest there uh, on them, them exact same place where he left off uh, in fulfillment of Scripture there, uh, and uh, that's where he'll he'll come again to, to establish his kingdom. Listen, there's something special about mountains in the Bible, Amen. Uh, now, I don't know, maybe it's about the elevation. Maybe it's about a closeness with God. I don't know. Maybe it's about display. Maybe you think about it. You put the, you put the light on a mountain, more folks see it. Maybe it's about separation. Certainly, uh, I think, argument of application there in the area of, of simple separation. You know, a lot of folks, we don't, we don't, we say mountains are beautiful. The mountaintop experience is beautiful. A lot of times, we're not willing to put in the effort or the work to get up there. Amen. And so there's certainly a, a separation involved there. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I've never climbed any. Real tall mountains. Why? I don't. I don't want to. Amen. It's, there's a lot of extra work in there. I'm a little scared of heights. Amen. There's there's some people though that have climbed some some. They, I mean they've got they've, they've they've done some pretty remarkable things in the area of climbing mountains. There's a separation between us in that in that regard. Amen. Spiritually in our own Christian lives, I think there's a there's certainly as we as we climb up uh, in that elevation as we as we look forward and, and climb toward those mountaintop experiences, there's certainly some separation involved there uh, that takes place. Maybe it's all of the above. I don't know. Maybe there's several more things and more application there. I don't know, but I thought it was a blessing as we considered the importance of, of mountains in, in Scripture and in that place uh, that Jesus chose to 
uh, to transfigure there in front of his, uh, his uh, brothers there. And so we see the, the purpose in that last part of verse 2, also going into verse number 3. The Bible says that he was transfigured before them. Uh, and verse 3 says, And his raiment became shining, exceeding light as snow, so as no fuller on earth can light them. I mean, I love how Scripture always defines itself. Amen. I mean, you ever notice that? Uh, that's the blessing of God's word is that we, we don't have to be extremely intelligent to get a blessing from it. And we see that, that we see, well, what's that, that big word transfigured? Well, the Bible tells us his raiment became shining, seeming white as snow. It tells us what was taking place in that transfiguration. We see that he was, and there was a transformation taking place. And we were seeing the glory uh, of God. We were seeing his deity on full display. Uh, Jesus had, had brought these men under that mountain to, to reveal his glory Unto them, Amen. He was transfigured before them. The glory uh, had been had been uh, been robed within that veil of flesh, uh, and for a moment, they that that glory was revealed for them to see, Amen. His clothes were were brighter than than fresh fallen snow, Amen. And uh, you just imagine that. You know how bright that is. I, there's been some times where you know you, you ever heard of the the, the terminology snow blind. Amen. If, if there's there's certain times of day for like snowboarding and snowmobiling and different kind of winter sports that man you have to have some sort of sunglasses on because you can look away from the sun all you want. But if you're looking down at that snow, it's just almost as bad as looking at the sun. Amen. You imagine the the Bible's telling us here that it was even whiter than that. Amen. Whiter than that than that uh, uh, fresh snow uh, on a winter morning. Amen. His clothes were brighter than that 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 snow. Whiter than any washing machine and detergent combination could have ever cleaned them. Amen. White uh, as the snow. God had plans for these men uh, in the coming days. Amen. God had some plans for them. Uh, they were going to be, uh, of course, God was going to use them. They were going to be instrumental in, in, in uh, the, the birth of the local New Testament church. Amen. Uh, and, and preaching the gospel. Uh, God was going to use them. Their faith was going to be tested. Their faith was about to be tested. It was soon going to be tested. Uh, like it had never been before, amen? And and they were going to need a reminder, amen? They were going to need something to look back to uh, and, and be reminded of the power and the glory of the Lord. Now, listen, I've never seen, I've never seen, I wasn't there uh, at the Mount of Transfiguration, amen? I've never seen His radiant glory, but a couple of thoughts I can pull away from this. One, for one thing, one day I will see Him as He is. Amen. In Jesus Christ, if you put your faith and your trust in Jesus to be your personal Savior, your sins are washed away, uh, someday we will see him like he is. That's the first thought I, I, I pulled from this. Uh, the second thought is, that's the beauty and the blessing of the Word of God. Because we know it's real, because we, we know that it's authentic, and it is God's Word for us, we can look at this passage of Scripture and we can utilize the imagination that he's given us and we can, in, 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 in some sort of a likeness, be able to enjoy this Mount Transfiguration right along there with these three disciples that got close to him. Amen. And uh, what a blessing. Amen. I, I do believe that there's times where we will, as we grow in the Lord, that we'll get, we'll, the Lord will allow certain things and just allow us to kind of, uh, his pages to illuminate so we can just enjoy this blessing, even, even though we weren't there. This happened several times. 100 years ago, amen. We see not only the, the, the purpose, but we go on here to verse 4 and we see the perspective. The Bible says, And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. So the disciples they, and, and, uh, and Jesus, they, they, were, they were met there by Elijah, Old Testament prophet, Moses. Uh, we know him, amen, right there on that mountain. Uh, not an illusion. Amen. This really happened. This is a, just not, not some dream. Uh, that they came up with, not some, not, not, not some trick of hypnosis, amen. Uh, they, they literally stood there with them on that mountain, literally talking to Jesus. Luke's account, uh, Luke's account actually re re reveals that, that uh, Elijah and Moses were talking to Jesus regarding his death. Amen. They, they were talking about, they were discussing the cross. They were talking about the cross that Jesus was just about to, uh, just about to, to hang upon. Amen. They were, they were talking about his death. They were talking about the sacrifice he was about to make for all of humanity, for our sin debt. Amen. There's a lot, I believe, that could be taken from these, these, uh, these two men talking with Jesus. Um, uh, first thought here, Moses represents the law of God. Amen. Uh, Elijah, he was the first of the mighty prophets. Amen. And we all know Elijah. At, at, at this moment, the New Testament was not was not 
It was not complete. It wasn't, it wasn't written. We see in the book of Hebrews, and before that, it wasn't even it wasn't com, uh, considered the New Testament yet, because the testator had not died yet. Amen. Uh, so we're 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 still uh, in this in this transition period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so at this at this moment, the New Testament wasn't written. These men, listen, these men pictured an entirety of Scripture pointing to Christ. Amen? Listen, the, the Bible uh, is, it, it's his story. Amen? It's, it, it's, it's the book of Jesus. Amen? It is, it is his story. It's the message of salvation. Uh, you, you look at the Old Testament, we see pointing to the cross. Amen? We see the coming Messiah. We see the Savior. Uh, we can see, even at, in creation, we can see how in the New Testament it testified how he was the Savior before the creation of the world. And then we can see, we can go back and we can look on the account of creation and see that right after the fall of man, God was making promise and foretelling a Savior. Amen? The Bible is a, is a book about him. The Bible is his story. Amen? We, we know that Moses died. We know that Elijah was taken up and, and, and with a, uh, up in a chariot of fire. I, I, don't, uh, I don't know how far we could go down, down this trail, but I just kind of thought about the resurrection of, of the dead. I thought, about, I thought about a picture of those uh, who, were, who were dead and those who were still alive at the resurrection of the Savior. Amen. And you see, God's not limited. Moses is standing there on Mount Transfiguration. We know at some point Moses died. We know Elijah was taken up by a chariot, and he didn't, he didn't actually, hadn't died. So there was nothing that was keeping God from allowing both that had two different endings to come together there on that Mount Transfiguration, amen? Listen, that, that reminds me of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, where the promise is that the, those that are dead in Christ, uh, those, they, they won't hinder, uh, we won't hinder those that are dead in Christ. They will first be called up, amen? Those that are still alive and remain will be caught up in the air uh, together uh, forever. Amen. What a blessing. Uh, the saints and dead will be included in that number, praise God, uh, around that throne there uh, as we worship the Lord for all eternity. And as believers uh, who are alive when Jesus returns, we will be there with them as well. Amen. Listen, there is hope for all who are saved by grace, those that have put their trust in Christ as Savior, whether they live to see His return uh, or, or whether they have already went on and stepped into eternity because His whole body wore out. Amen. Nothing limits God. God's future program. I don't know about you. That just that, we could we could quit. I got another point. We could I was we could quit right there. Amen. Amen. I, I, I knew that was how did I know that was coming? Amen. <laughs> Verses 5 through verse 8, we see the confirmation of Jesus. This third point here, the confirmation of Jesus. These uh, these verses they they uh, they uh, reveal to us the, the, the confirmation uh, of Jesus by our Heavenly Father. Think about that, that verse number five. There. Think about that declaration there. So, so the Bible says, And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make there or make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. So, so Jesus, Moses, Elijah, they weren't the only one that was that was doing some talking that day, man. Uh, after after seeing these folks here, these men with Jesus. Peter, he wanted, he, listen, I, he, I can't blame him. He wanted to stay on the top of that mountain, amen? He wanted some reason to go back there. He wanted to, he wanted to relive that experience. I can't blame him for that. I, I, we can say he's wrong, sure, I understand that. But I can't, I can't blame uh, the haste uh, in, in this. I can't, I can't blame the sediment, amen? Because I certainly can imagine wanting to continue that experience. Have you ever enjoyed those mountaintop experiences? You say, God, please don't ever let me come down. Hey amen. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about health, wealth, and prosperity. I'm talking about those spiritual pinnacles. Hey amen. I'm talking about those spiritual mountaintop experiences where you saw God move, you saw the power of God firsthand, you saw His glory shine, and you said, "God, please don't ever let me come down from this." Now, of course, a part of life we're gonna have to come down in the valley every now and again. Amen. Uh, but you, you can't blame you can't blame Peter for wanting to stick around a little longer, or find some reason to come back uh, to that place. It, it, it's, it's encouraging to note here that Peter, he knew who Moses was. He recognized Moses. He knew it was Moses. He knew it was Elijah. He knew who they were. Amen. And he, and he recognized a good place when he saw one. Amen. Uh, of course, we, we, we've seen in Peter's life, he spoke before he thought. Amen. This is something that's kind of common in his life. He spoke before he thought. And as he's, as he's done a few different times, amen. And uh, tells us he, tell, the scripture tells us he wanted to build three tabernacles there, one for Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. So listen, we don't know exactly what he meant by that per se. 
we, we, we don't know all of his motive. We don't, we don't know his heart. We don't know all, all that was going on in his mind when he said that. But we, we certainly learn quickly here that this idea wasn't pleasing to God. This wasn't what he had in mind. This wasn't the, this wasn't the goal. Amen. Uh, it, it was exciting to see Moses. It was exciting to see Elijah. It was exciting to see all three of them uh, com uh, conversating and talking. Amen. But Jesus was the focus. He was supposed to be the focus. He was the focus. He is the Lord. Amen. So we see not only the declaration, but we go on here in verse 6 and we see the intimidation. The Bible says, for he wished not what to say, for they were sore afraid. Amen. Listen, Peter felt as if, if he had to say something. Amen. I, you ever get in that place? Amen. I'm sure we've all been there. And then probably every time we look back, as Peter looked back and say, good grief, that got reported somewhere. Amen. Uh, he had to say something. But he, he really didn't know what he was supposed to say. And they, they were afraid. Hey, man, I think, I, I mean, I, as exciting as it'd be, there's got to be a little bit. I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, that's got to that's make you, I mean, at least hesitant. Amen. Uh, but they, they were afraid. They, they, they were you know, in the presence of the Lord. They were Moses. They were Elijah. Men who had been gone from, from earth for, for hundreds of years. Amen. Listen, we, we too, I think, would have been a little afraid. Amen. We too would have been a little bit afraid, but there's I think there's a lesson that we can that we can we can we can enjoy, we can learn here. Listen, when you're unsure what to say, it is better to just say nothing at all. Amen. And listen, I understand this is a tough thing probably for all of us. I know it's a tough thing for me. It was a tough thing for Peter. Uh, and, and, and you know, Peter went on to be used by God in mighty ways. So we understand even the even the, the, the giants of the faith, if you will. Can, I mean this this a, it's a struggle. So we have to on purpose, we gotta think about those those kind of things and say, you know, if we don't know what to say, let's just not say anything. I read something that was kind of a neat quote here. I've heard it before, I'm not sure where I don't know where the origin is, but it really fit well with us. Uh, but it's better to remain silent and be thought foolish than to open one's mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> amen? I think it's a very, very good saying. I'm not sure who came up with it, amen? Uh, but a very good saying. Listen, we don't always, we don't have to always say something. I, uh, my, my son, I, my son is, is growing, and uh, I, I, I won't, uh, I'm not going to be, belittle him or say anything mean about him. But part of the growing process is he likes to, he likes to talk, and he likes to conversate. And part of what I'm trying to teach him is, buddy, when you're around adults, you've got to just, don't talk. Don't talk, right? Just, just listen, man. We, we learn so much from listening. And I, I think that that's, that's something that even as adults we have to work on, amen? Even as adults sometimes we like to launch out. I remember a couple's retreat a few years ago, a couple years ago, we was having my wife, and one of the topics was launching out. And over the last couple years, it's been something I've tried to work on so hard. My wife could be a mid sentence like, ah, da, 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 da. And just start talking. Any other guys like that? Please don't know them. Uh, but we we kind of launch, and we want to fit. We're fixers, right? So as she gets halfway through the sentence, we already know what the rest of the sentence is going to be, and we want to fix it, and we already know how to fix it. The well, thing is, our wife ain't looking for us to fix it, right? She just wants us to listen, and uh, she wants us to listen. Sometimes there's really that is the solution. It's just listen, amen. And uh, a lot of times we just want to get we we get a quarter of the way through the, the story. We already know the rest of the story, and we already know how to fix it. And so we start the fixing process before she's done finishing. That's you know we have sometimes just be quiet and listen, amen. Just 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 quiet down. Just listen because sometimes that's all it. That's just the, the, the victory would be just in the listening. We don't have to do anything, amen. Uh, sometimes uh, it, it is better to just just silently think, silently contemplate the truth of God, rather than always trying to offer an explanation. Maybe sometimes we just need to ponder. Sometimes we need to just quiet down. Sometimes we need to just think, amen. We see in verse number seven, we see the affirmation, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. Here. Amen. Follow after uh, Peter's unsought counsel, if you will. Uh, this is another unusual event. Amen. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it, it was pretty, pretty awesome to see Moses and see Elijah there talking with Jesus, but something even, even, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I don't even know if I have urban words, English words that I can think to describe this, but this cloud comes over the mountain and the voice of God speaks in their presence. Amen. Listen, the, the, the Father, he, he, he affirms that Jesus was his son. He, 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 he admonished Peter and, and the others to just, just hear him. Just hear him. I mean, this wasn't about Moses. 
This wasn't about Elijah. They, they, they played an important role. God used them in an important role, but that's not what it was about. I mean, it was about Jesus. Moses and Elijah was pointing to Jesus. I mean, they were talking about salvation. They were talking about his death. They were talking about the very focal point of Scripture, Jesus' payment on the cross of Calvary for the lost, uh, for the lost uh, sinners like you and me. Amen. He, he, Jesus uh, was, 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 was to be the focal point. He admonished Peter and the others to hear him. This was, this was about Jesus being recognized. This was about, this was about him being, his deity being revealed and being shown and being seen very clearly. He was going to give his life on the cross for, for our sin. I mean, he was just about ready to, to pay that ultimate sacrifice. I mean, he was the one they needed to hear. Look at verse number 8. We see the exaltation. The Bible says, and suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. Amen. So, so after this affirmation of, the, uh, of our Heavenly Father, Moses and Elijah, they disappear. Jesus again, he stands there alone with his disciples. Amen. They, 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 began, they began this journey with Jesus. Amen. And they would return from that mountain with him alone. Listen, I, I don't, there's no doubt this was, this was, there was, there, there was, this was done on purpose. Amen. This, I believe this was done to emphasize the fact that Jesus was all they needed. Amen. Jesus was enough. Whether it was on the mountain, whether it was coming off the mountain, all they needed was Jesus. Amen. It was exciting to see Moses. No doubt. Pretty fun. To see Elijah. No doubt they heard of the story of, of Elijah and Mount Carmel. Amen. No doubt they had heard of Moses and the party of the Red Sea. No doubt they had heard those things. And it was exciting to see them. Yes, amen. It was exciting to see them. But they, they, they weren't there necessarily for their benefit. They were there to point to Jesus. And they had Jesus. That's all they needed. They didn't need Moses. They didn't need Elijah. They needed the Savior. Amen. He alone was going to bear their sin. It was, it was, it was him alone that was going to provide their redemption, our redemption. Amen. And so, therefore, he alone was worthy of their devotion. He alone was worthy of their worship. Listen, I, I can't. I don't think I can overemphasize this truth today. Amen. Every. It seems like there are so many people that are steering away from Jesus, adding everything they can to him, in, involving our flesh in, in, in worship decisions. You know, it's, it's all about us first, and then if there's a little bit of Jesus in there, sounds good. That's, that's I don't think we can overemphasize this truth today. Uh, if, if we have Jesus, we have all we need. It is all about Him. Amen? He alone secured our salvation. Nobody else secured our salvation. Amen? Nobody, nobody else died on the cross, that, that vicious, that brutal death. Amen? Not only, not, not, no, nobody else... Nobody else uh, took upon him the, the, the judgment of sin, uh, our sin. Amen. Listen, he alone secured our salvation. We, we are, listen, today you're enjoying security and you're enjoying the assurance of salvation because we're resting in his finished work. Amen. Amen. We're not resting in Moses' finished work or Elijah's finished work. That's, that's awesome. But they didn't save us. Amen. We're resting in his finished work, not our merit. Amen. Not our merit. Listen, I, I, I'm, we're on Wednesday night. I, this is the cream of the crop. Amen. I know, I know that. I know that. Preaching to the choir. But none of us still, even on Wednesday night group, none, none of us, none of us merited salvation. None of us could even come close. Yes, sir. Amen. Many in our day, they, they caught up in different movements. They'll, they'll follow certain men. I always try to be careful. I've seen that you know, in our fundamental Baptist churches. I've seen men, men in worship and that. They wouldn't call it that, but it's, I, listen, I have heroes of the faith. There's nothing wrong with that. I have heroes of the faith. I have heroes in this room. I mean, I, there's some men I look up to, um, and women that have been godly characters that I look up to. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, if it's not scriptural, I'm not following it. Yeah. Amen. Well, that's, that's where we, that's where we, I, to save, I, I don't care about saving face. We get outside the boundaries of God's word, I'm out of here. Amen? It's all about Jesus. He's all we need. Amen? And I'm following him. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for those that, 
that, that are used of God to, uh, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I'm thankful for those that have went on before. We've had, we have so many wonderful godly examples that have went on before. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. Amen. But we need to be careful that we never elevate man to a position that is reserved for Christ alone. Amen. Or he, he, it, it's all about him. Amen. I, I, uh, I began this journey of salvation with Christ. Amen. And it started when I trusted him as Savior. I began it with him. And it's going to be him that carries me through to its completion. Amen. Amen. Uh, along the way, God used many men of God to help me along the way. Please, I'm not discrediting God's use of men. Please don't misunderstand me. But, but he gets the glory. Amen. He gets my devotion. I'm following him. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Let me close. I, what up, what up? I know it's a familiar passage of scripture. We've all read that. Maybe, maybe you've got better study notes than I've got in my Bible. That's okay. But it does reveal great truth. Amen. There's a, there's a I think, great, great amount of blessing here. Uh, Jesus, listen, he wanted these men to see him, to hear him. Amen. And that's, I mean, that, does it get better than that? It don't. Amen. It don't get better than that. That's who we need. That's who we need to hear. That's who we need to see. Amen. Uh, they, 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 they would, would need that reminder of his glory as they face the difficulties in their future. Amen. They were, they were going to listen. They were going to, they were going to face some intense persecution in the coming days. Right. They were going to need to look back. On. They were going to need something to look back on. Amen. They needed to learn that Christ alone was sufficient. That he would be their sufficiency. That he would meet their needs. Amen. That he was enough. If they had him, that's all they needed. Listen, we need, we as well, even far removed from that century, far removed from that day, we need those reminders in our life. Amen. As we walk with the Lord, we're going to find. Now, I'm thankful that at least up until this point and in this day, we don't have, we have not had to deal with the same intense persecution and some of the same difficulties that the disciples had. But we all have our share of difficulties. I mean, the, the body failing in its own and, and, and slowly deteriorating and us not being able to do anything about it, amen, that enough is some difficulties comes along with that, amen. And uh, I played softball on Monday. And man, at 40 years old, why? Why is it 39 didn't seem that bad? One year later, I can barely bend down and pick up a ball. I mean, it's creaking and groaning and moaning and just, I mean, that's just, and that's just the, and I'm only 40. I'm not even barely middle aged yet, amen. If we, if we're, I'm, I'm shooting for 100, so I'm making my own rules up as I go. So 50 is going to be middle aged for me, amen. But listen, we're gonna, all going to go through struggles and difficulties. Jesus is all we need, though. And we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded just sometimes we just need to listen. We need to focus on Him. We need to see Him and listen to what He's got to say for us, amen. I'm not talking, I'm not being. Being charismatic, nothing like that. This is, what he, this is what he wants to say to us right here. Amen. Nothing, no new revelation, nothing brand new, nothing, nothing, nothing that's not already been revealed. But, but sometimes he wants to give us what we need. So we can keep on moving. Sometimes we just gotta stop talking and be quiet. In our prayer, try that in your prayer time. Stop rambling off the grocery list and spend, spend a couple moments just listening. Okay. Amen. Let, let the Lord let the Lord show you some scripture. Amen. Let the Lord encourage you uh, in his word. I hope the Lord's helped you today. I hope the scriptures helped you today. Let's go ahead and pray and dismiss this evening. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for how good you are to us. We do thank you for this, this wonderful, wonderful truth. I know I need to, I need to be reminded of that that's your all we need. And uh, no matter how crazy this world gets, no matter how difficult our day gets, we can have the confidence that in you we have all sufficiency. And so I pray, dear God, that you will let just lay that wonderful truth on our heart tonight to believe. Help that to be a help to us. Uh, in these coming days, not only in the media days, but also I hope, hopefully this will be something that just lasts for a good long time uh, from this study. Uh, pray for, for those tonight that just may be struggling at, at, uh, as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. We don't know everything going on in everybody's hearts and lives. And so I pray for those that are struggling a little bit more uh, than, uh, than anybody even knows tonight. Just, just help them to see uh, the, the wonderful truth that you are all we need. I love you. Thank you. And just to give us safety to travel home, give us a boldness to share your message with the lost and dying in our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name.